Hello everybody and welcome to Weekly Shonen Jump Ore Collection. My name is Scarface King. Today we have the hardest event that has dropped on this game so far, Seto Kaiba. And I'm going to be going through the unit, the event, possible teams you can use and my strategy for beating said event. So to begin, we're going to talk about the unit himself, Seto Kaiba, what you're fighting for. So. When you beat the event first time, you will get a free star version of Seto Kaiba drop. If you want more copies for overboost, you have to continue to farm the stage, earn points and use those points in the store to trade in for more copies. My personal opinion is that this is simply not worth it. Um, you can see that however you want, but first off, they don't give you enough copies to max overboost them. Second off, even if they did, the amount of farming required in order to get the copies, you're going to use so many stamina bottles. If you don't have the bottles, you're going to be using all your orbs. I just, I think just get one copy and be done. At absolute maximum, I would say go for the getting him to one overboost. So you'll need four copies for that. You get one for free, so you know you need three copies. Do that. Maybe even just get two extra copies and then grab yourself, you know... Uh, one of those 10 stamina drinks that are in the store right now or I don't know it's it's up to you all I'm saying is I personally wouldn't go beyond one copy because this event is not only hard it requires an insane amount of grinding and for the average player it's just not worth it so to talk about the event talk about the unit itself and what you're going to be getting here this is a very very good unit as far as free to play units go he, I think, is the best there is at the moment. Uh, I, I might be wrong, but off the top of my head, I can't think of a free-to-play unit better than Seto Kaiba. He is, he is jump standard. He is one of the best units in the game. Um, I know that sounds like I'm talking talking him up, you know. He is really good. So, he's an intelligence unit and he's an all-rounder. As I've said before, you will know all-rounders tend to have amazing stats. And Seto Kaiba does, in fact, have amazing stats. Um, he's a 1990s unit. This is where things change. So it seems like one of the things they're going to be doing for raid units is they're going to have a 5 star leader skill and a victory leader skill. Where other units in the past, victory evolving them made no difference to their leader skill. That's not going to be the case here. So his 5 star leader skill is boosted defensive intelligence units by a large amount. And his victory leader skill is boosted defensive intelligence units by an extreme amount. So they're encouraging you, actively encouraging you to awaken him into victory which I think is reasonable because he's a good unit you're probably going to want to do that anyway um, so his attacks his ultimate attack which is ultimate burst which is obviously the attack uh, when he had the blue eyes ultimate dragon uh, boost damage dealt to agile enemies by an extreme amount for one turn and inflict 400% damage to all enemies and 300% damage to the target on a 32 cooldown remember all these skills are level 10 Skill 1, Spell, Block Attack, Prevent Damage to each member of your main team once, cooldown 30. Skill 2, Spell, Dark Energy, Reduce the attack of the target by an extreme amount for 2 turns. Furthermore, Chance to roll back their skills by 5%, cooldown 23. And Skill 3, Trap, Deck Destruction, Virus of Death, Inflict 1500 damage to this unit, so to Kaiba and inflict 200% damage to all enemies and poison them for two turns. Cooldown 21. Um, the poison is very good. It is 2500 damage per turn for two turns, so really decent. Um, and it's passives. Boost this unit's attack against agile enemies by a medium amount. For one turn at the start of battle, boost this unit's defense by an extreme amount. And when this unit's HP is 30% or less, boost this unit's ultimate attack damage by an extreme amount. Um, in general, he's crazy good. The, the one thing setting Kaiba back is that he is intelligence type, and right now strength type is, I would say, the strongest type in the game. Yellow is making a hard, a hard, hard, hard contest for that, because you have units like Iori, Soma, Goku, that make those teams very hard to kill. Um, but in general, Red is the team that has the highest, uh... The highest firepower and so he he maybe will suffer especially in pvp but in general for all other content he is going to be a fantastic unit that you're definitely going to want to use 
Okay, moving on to the boss stage. Now, this event is only one stage. It's not one of these multiple stage events we've had in story mode. It's one stage. It's set Okaiva. You literally jump in and you go. Um, the problem with that is this stage is very, 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 very difficult. So, for people that are, you know, veterans of the game, you will absolutely be able to find a team that can beat this stage. Um, especially if you've, you know, pulled on all the old banners and you've built up a nice, you know, staple of overboosted units, victory awakened units that you can just throw in a team and get going. Players that are new to the game, honestly, you're going to struggle so bad. This event is so hard. Um, there might be some ways you can put something together and depending on the units in your box, it might very well be possible for you. Um, but for a lot of people, if you don't have Sakuragi, if you don't have... Iori, if you don't have Rei, if you don't have Goku, if you don't have Soma, it, it's starting to look really bad for you and, it, and you're probably going to struggle. Um, but let's go through the event and let, let's just talk it out. So much like his actual unit counterpart, there are a lot of similarities, but there are some very, very key differences that we need to talk about. So president of the Kaiba Corporation, Seto Kaiba. He's an intelligence type, he's an all-rounder, he's a 1990s unit. His ultimate attack, ultimate burst, inflict 200% damage to the entire enemy main team. Furthermore, inflict 200% damage to a random main team enemy. Cooldown 25. Skill 1, spell, block attack. Prevent damage to this unit 12 times. Cooldown 25. Skill 2, trap, deck destruction, virus of death. Inflict 125% damage to all enemies. Furthermore, chance to poison all enemies for 3 turns. Cooldown 18. Um, now, the key difference between this unit and uh, the, the droppable, or sorry, the unit you can buy from the store. Um, he only has 2 skills, not 3. Not including his armor attack, obviously. And the 2 skills, only one of them will be active at a time. It's random which one he switches to. He switches randomly in battle. So um, RNG is a massive factor in this fight. I know for me, I'll show my, I'll show the teams I used. I'll show some of the uh, victory runs and some of the failed runs. But for me, if I got good RNG, I could clear it in under five minutes in game time, which is which is the equivalent of like two, two to three minutes real time. Uh, but in a <laughs> In a bad run, it could go on for minutes and minutes and minutes, which is what makes this so difficult to farm so many copies, because if you get bad RNG, you do kind of feel like you're up against it. Um, but there's a couple more things we need to talk about. So his passives, which were stated in the news, but were never stated uh, in the actual game, in, in the in-game info. He has three passives as far as I know. One of them, I don't explicitly know the details, but it's for the first turn he does more damage. But the other two we do explicitly know, and that is once at the start of battle, this unit's skill will be roll forward 80%. So the skill, not the ultimate attack, and the skill is obviously, it's random whether it will be block attack or virus of death. Some people will prefer it to be block attack because then you can, you know, just get rid of the barrier as soon as possible. Other people will say virus of death because then you can clear the poison as quick as possible. It really depends on what units you have and how that's going to affect your runtime. Um, and its final passive, reduce the chance of this unit being affected by debuffs by an extreme amount. This one is annoying. If you have Iori, do not bring the charm debuff. If you have Suna, leave him in your box. Do not bring him. Anybody who will debuff this character, who will try and poison him charm him, freeze him, burn him, these are all very unlikely to affect him. You can still affect him with stuff like attack down, critical hit down, stuff like that. Um, but again, just you've got to remember that the key strategy here isn't going to be debuffing him, isn't going to be reducing his stats. The key strategy is going to be stalling him. And I'll go into that when I show the team I actually used to stall him out, but um, other than that, what you need to know about him, his characteristics are the same, student and rival. Uh, some people may be able to use that to their benefit if they have certain units. And the stats, <laughs> he has 3,000 attack, 1,000 defense, and 60 speed. <laughs> so he is a menace. And for, I mean, you, you'll see it in game when you see the footage playing out. 
his skills just pop off just over and over and over and over and over again. Uh, unless you're stalling him, unless you're, you know, doing something to stop him from attacking you, he's just going to keep dropping those skills over and over. Uh, so that's, that's the analysis part done. Uh, let's talk about the units. The units I think you need to bring on this stage in order to be successful. So, we have the gods here and we have the good. The good units, for the most part, are, you know, they're just good to have. S units like Joey, like Momo, like Jotaro. Units that have a clear use in a team, but alone will not be enough to help you win. So, I personally stopped using Jotaro in my team. In theory, he is the f he's the best unit for the job. He hits multiple times on Kaiba's uh, block and gets rid of, you know, obviously Kaiba blocks 12 hits. Jotaro hits for like 15 or 16. So, in theory, Jotaro is the main man. I personally found that he slows me down a little bit. That might just be me. That might just be my setup. I don't know. But uh, I personally found that he wasn't that good. Momo and Joey are two incredible units to have. But again, alone, they aren't good enough. Momo, if you have Goku, is a must, I think. Uh, obviously, if you want to go for a more offensive team, you can drop her. But taking out HP is never a good thing. Uh, especially against Kaiba. You need that HP. Um, same with Joey. But in general, Joey, I find, is used to just die instantly. You just put him in the front row, he dies instantly. And then you can get your friend captain in. You have the effects of Joey's extreme HP buff as well in effect, so good to go. But here we're going to talk about the god tier units. These are the guys that could actually have a massive impact on whether you're able to beat the stage or not. So we have Soma, Goku, Sakuragi, Rei, and Yori. These five are the five horsemen of the apocalypse. They are the ones that are key in beating the stage now if you happen to have all five of these units on one account you will find this stage relatively easy uh, you know goku is a leader bring a goku friend if you want you could put sagaragi or rei as the leader if you want to boost the strength attack um but then have iori and soma obviously as your supports and a goku friend mad 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 team so I'm going to let it play out on screen, uh, the last successful run on my main account, and then we're going to move into my alt account, where I believe I have a, I don't know if I'd say optimal, semi-optimal AFK auto style team for beating this event. Uh, it is consistent. Uh, if you play manually, you'll never lose. Uh, but if you want to play AFK like I do and just auto it, uh, I don't think it's died when I've autoed even once, but uh, that doesn't mean to say that it can't happen if like terrible RNG does occur. Um, so the team, basically, the way it works is we have the Goku and we have the friend Goku, uh, and we're making use of Joey. I would argue that Momo is a better choice here. Uh, I didn't have her ready to put in this team on my second account, so I did use Joey. Soma is my only healer on this account. Uh, well, I do have others, but there is no Iori. So, just going with Soma. We're making use of Sakuragi. Having Sakuragi means hit Sakuragi and Rei both get two attacks every turn while Sakuragi is above 80% health. So, definitely want to do that. Rei is there simply because he is the hard here. He is the main man. Um, now, Joey. When Joey dies, another Goku comes in. And that's where things get interesting. Because my Goku and the friend Goku can be infinitely stalling Sao Kaiba. This doesn't stop him from attacking altogether. If you wanted to do that, you'd have to work in a character like Ryuji or someone like that. The way this is set up, that's not going to happen. I, I suppose it might be possible if you swapped out um, the skill 4 into Goku's skill set to boost his speed. Uh, and give him multiple attacks a turn. That, that could work. Um, I personally haven't tried it, so I can't tell you for sure. But this team, if you have these units, obviously I understand this isn't exactly free to play friendly. The truth is I did try so many times to get a free to play friendly team, but I don't think it's possible. Or if it is possible, it's very inconsistent, very hard to do. 
and it it's just not worth my, my time to keep trying. I want to get this video out, so I've got what I've got. There is one more team after this one, uh, which is an interesting one, uh, but this team... It, well, yeah, I basically said everything I need to say about the Goku team. Wait for the poison. Um, obviously, without Yori, there's no poison removal. So the po the times when he'd be poisoning you, that's when you're going to have to get as much damage as possible. Uh, hoping that you don't die from the poison. Obviously, with the two Soma healing skills, that's probably not going to happen. But it, it can happen. It definitely can happen. So be careful. Um, but yeah, in, ge in general, just... Hit him, hit him while he hasn't got his barrier up. While he does have his barrier up, avoid using Ray's ultimate attack. I've done it a couple of times. I don't know if, if it's in this video, but a couple of times where I've been autoing and the AI has used Ray's attack while he has his block up. It will do nothing. It is not worth it. Same with Sakuragi. Um, same with Goku as well. Just hit him with normal attacks. Hit him with other skills. But don't be hitting him with, <laughs> don't be hitting him with your heavy artillery while he has that block up.